what we're going to do um, uh, is talk about building your alliance. So as I mentioned, and we're going to have a recruiting discussion right after, which you guys are going to present, and then Cody's going to wrap us up after this message, okay? Uh, whoever wants, we're going to be going to Bex Prime to go eat um, uh, and just kind of get some time together, all right? So this is really huge. When you guys are, um, we want to build an alliance. So obviously recruiting, we know that's we don't recruit, we don't have a team, we don't have, we don't have a business, right? <laughs> so recruiting is obviously the most important thing and making sure we have a great plan, which you guys are gonna mingle and create and present. Like, what, it, what are you actually doing in the next 30 days to build your alliance? Because exactly one month from today, June 8th, we are meeting um, uh, for our 10K Alliance Bootcamp uh, to prepare for the push. Um, and that, that right there, like pushes, just so you guys know, 70% of annual sales for almost every top office. And we've done, we've ran the stats, we've put it up like all across the nation, like Dana Espigar, Drew Frank, Brian Herman, like we've put every top manager, myself obviously, and looked at the breakdown of their year sales and how much was done during pushes, okay? And almost every single top manager, 70% of their annual sales have come in pushes. Okay, or excuse me, summer, all right? Um, about 40% of their annual sales came during those pushes. Almost half of annual sales came in a four-week period or five-week period. Can you guys wrap your minds around that? Do you feel it matters to pay attention to that? Those who haven't had quick pushes, you know, like they just kind of ship, you know, 500, four to 500 a year. And the managers who understand the value of pushes, all right, all of a sudden produce because during those two weeks, they will sell 200, 300, $400,000 or more in a two week period, two times. So again, you guys can do the math, right? If they're shipping half a million dollars, let's say between the two, all right, half a million dollars in five weeks, 250K, 250K or a 200K push and a 300K push, which I believe is what um, uh, College Station is going after or more, but 200K and then 300K, all right, that's $500,000 in five weeks of our 52 week year. Got it? Um, uh, and by the way, we've been doing it like this forever. And the managers, the, the highest, the, the million dollar managers, we all have big pushes. That's how you get million dollar managers. You don't produce 1 million, 1.5, million dollar offices not having pushes, okay? So um, I want you guys to wrap your mind around that, that it's like your business and half of your sales district managers will come in five weeks, cool? Uh, or can come in five weeks if you wanted to. Um, uh, and it's really cool. And so I'm very passionate about pushes because I'm like, dude, 52 weeks out of the year, if I bust my ass for five weeks, I produce half my sales for the year, let's do this shit, all right? I have no problem working hard for five weeks. And that's why for those who know me, I can travel eight, nine months out of the year, right? Um, uh, and because I really focus on making sure the summer counts or season counts and specifically the pushes, all right? So how do we do this? One, it's understanding what I just talked about, right? Like understanding the importance of it, I think is super important. The lot of managers don't get that, don't know that. And so they miss out on that, okay? Two, it's planning properly and having the right conversations. We're gonna walk through that right now, all right? And then the third part is actually executing. We're not gonna talk about executing now uh, until we get together in our June staff meeting, but know this, for the push, uh, Cody and I, the bench, we're going to be doing it together. We're going to do it for you. You can do it on your own, but we're meeting every day, 8 a.m., Monday through Saturday for the two weeks. Uh, every morning, we're going to have alliance calls together, and we're going to give you guys what tips and what things to focus on with your people. Cool? And if you're like, I'd rather do it with you, jump on mine. I'll be on the divisional. I'll be on this Zoom, and I will be running it. Uh, we'll have guest speakers. We'll have different people, but every morning, we're going to do 20 minutes of teaching. Cool? Um, uh, 10 minutes. You guys will go to your go with your room. So like, let's say we're all in the divisional group, right? Uh, everyone's on at 8 a.m. We have someone teaching for 20 minutes, 8, 28 to 25. We're going into breakout rooms. College station's in a room. The pilot's in a room. Memorial's in a room. Uh, West Houston, everyone has their own room with their team. Uh, and that morning, we'll have told you, hey, here's what to focus on. Cool. Um, and so during those 10 minutes, it's recognizing your people, focuses for the day, and making sure they're getting ready for a great phone jam. Cool. Focuses, everyone makes minimum of 20 phone calls. And then, you know, they head out. Uh, or they stay phoning until they're booked for the day if they don't have their four for that day. So again, we're going to talk more and walk through that when we get together in June. Um, but know that it's going to be structured divisionally. It's going to be super simple for y'all. Just get people there, right? We want people on the alliance who are actually showing up. So now back to how do we, what are the conversations? How do we get people on alliance? All right. So one, every interview. So put that point one interviews. Everyone is running interviews. Anyone is doing anything. And I would even say PR callers 
recruiting assistants, helping schedule people. When I talk to people now during summer, I'm like, hey, you know, I'd ask John uh, if you knew anyone, we're getting ready. Uh, basically, the summer's our season, like any sport, right? And we're getting ready for playoffs coming up, looking to really build our team. Like I mentioned that on PR calls when I'm talking to the sharpest kids. Why? Why do you guys think? I want them to want to be a part of that freaking alliance. Yeah, I want them hearing about it. When they come, they already know playoffs are coming and they're like, oh, I want to be a part of that group, right? So even when I personally set sharp PR, when I'm talking to PRs, this is not in a PR script or whatever, but for managers, you guys should be dropping seeds with those kids that you know you're going to want on your lines. <laughs> so I'm like, yeah, I was just calling you. Mike's been working with us. He's amazing. Um, uh, love having him on our team. Uh, and we right now, we're looking to uh, to build our squad as we're preparing. Uh, we kind of work like a sports team. We have a lot of fun. Mike will tell you it's super competitive. Um, uh, and our season just opened. We have season opener this week. Well, we're getting ready for playoffs next month, and we're really looking to squad up. So we're looking for people who are super friendly, who can work well. You know, he said that you guys work together at Blank. And they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, and we're chatting. So I'm just dropping that, like, in that PR conversation um, uh, and letting them know, like, their friend recommended them because we're looking to squad up for the playoffs, all right? So that's, like, why I'm calling them. So that's, like, a little adjustment, but psychologically, it ties those kids in, and they're like, oh, cool, you know? So now when they come to the interview and they hear, like, oh, yeah, she told me about that, all right? Those who did didn't hear that so um so we got pr call all right you guys can drop that in there and i would all right anytime you talk to people that's up to you and your comfort but i know that if you can start there you're going to have more people tied into it the second place is in the interview interviewers anyone running interviews or helping with interviews we need to be mentioning this is not in your interview script everyone got that this is not in your interview script you need to plug the time of the year cool and so right now We've had a lot of people we're flying for the positions right now we're just screening through this first part i'm going to go through some information about our company if you're running an apex if you're running a remote you're going to you know be talking to them and say hey look i'm going to ask you a couple of things we're, we're looking for people to add on as we prepare you know our our um our, our business works very much like sports right where um like football season's in the fall uh, our season's now in the summer so we actually just opened season and we're preparing for our playoffs um next month and i just i want people who enjoy working in a team environment i'm looking for people who are, who are disciplined and independent and can work well on their own you know uh but again also in a team you know do you feel you work well do you feel you're you know disciplined whatever do you feel you work well on a team like just like little plugs right about like being able to work independently, but also work in a team. We're looking for people who can work in a team because we're going after big goals, right? Um, uh, and so just anywhere you can plug stuff about that and you can look at it. It'll be like when you're telling your story, it might be when you start your interview, uh, people are running different um, interviews. It doesn't matter. You just need to mention the time of the year, it's season. We're looking for people who are excited to grow. And we're also looking for people who are excited to be a part of something bigger than themselves and are excited to be part of a team. Um, so just making sure, what's up? Oh, sorry. Oh, you're excited so you can type it. <laughs> um, so we're recording this so you guys can go back and look at it. But just if you guys are talking about that in your interview, that makes people perk up. And especially the kids you want right on that squad who are the competitors who are the athletes who like to achieve who like to win who like to be part of national championship teams that's attractive to them okay uh, when you're like hey we're looking for this like how do you feel you work like independently do you feel you're pretty disciplined or how do you feel you work well on a team that's really important to me because even though everyone's working to hit their individual goals we're also working towards a big team goal and i'm excited about people who are um excited to be part of something bigger than themselves right um and they're like yeah yeah no i love where you know so so you're you're planting those seeds in the interview so make sure you guys are dropping that if you want a big alliance one month from now like think about that number i can tell you my number on on june 8th my goal is to have 30 people at that meeting on june 8th. cool i want a minimum of 30. i would love to have 50 there but I'm starting late into the summer, but I'm gonna do everything I can. College Station, you guys should be going after 50, but if you can have 30 people there, like that's gonna be really sexy at that meeting, which is exactly in a month, all right? Um, uh, could you have more? And I'm talking, I'm not talking about just 30 people there, I'm talking about 30 people who are excited to do 40 appointments in the next two weeks. Everyone got that? Because that's what Alliance, Alliance is teaming up, they're doing 40 appointments in a two week period. It's 20 appointments a week, all right? It's about four or five appointments a day depending if they're working, you know, um, or if they're working five or six days a week, it's, it's three or four appointments a day. So those are the people, when I say 30 people, it's people who are like, I'm in, let's go. I want to be part of the starting lineup. And they know we're going to be meeting every day for two weeks in the mornings together as a division uh, for that starting lineup to lead GCK to be one of the top divisions in the country uh, for the playoffs. And we're looking for people who can help us lead the charge. And so what, what does it take to be on Alliance? I want a great attitude. 
willingness to wake up, willingness to work, excitement to contribute to something bigger than themselves, you know? Um, uh, and so like, that's something I'm really looking for as we're talking. So again, PR to call, drop a little something, something there. In your interview, can you drop something about season? And we're looking for people that can work well independently, but also well on a team. You know, when you like ask them questions about themselves or what they've done, anywhere you can weave that in is really beautiful. Training, managers running training. You have to talk about this in your opening comments every week. Got it? Every week. So we are in your opening comments, in your next day, in your, like they need to hear it every day they see you for training. They need to hear it in advanced training. Every time you're kicking off a meeting, every time you're kicking off team meeting, they need to hear this, all right? So in training, I'll get to team meeting in a second, but in training, um, again, training managers, you guys are just not, hey, we're so excited to have you guys. You're starting at such a great time. When we talk about how you're starting at such a great time, which is in the script, in opening comments, that's where you want to plug. Um, like it's season right now. Uh, back in Miami, all right, I had a poster uh, made and we did a, a similar like a season poster, but the poster I had in Miami was super ghetto, piece of poster board that I'd made with marker. It was awesome though. And it was a staircase, you know, and it just said like, first it was like, um, challenge week or divisional scrimmage and it had the dates of it and then the next step had like uh, playoffs you know or it was like season opener and then playoffs and then uh, divisional scrimmage and then Super Bowl was like the top thing and then on the side it had like Pro Bowl which was like an extra thing you get invited to you know but it had the dates for everything and every time I was in training every time I was in an interview I'm like hey guys here's really the best time you're actually here for a season and it was like season season staircase or something. I don't know what we put on it, but I was like, here's where we're at right now. We're working towards this right now. In a month, we have this. Next month, we have that. And everybody knew that. And I'm like, and so we're looking for people like for this right here, for the playoffs and the Super Bowl. Um, just so you know, as you're in training, I'm going to be watching to see who are the people that have the best attitudes. Who are the people that communicate at the highest levels? And I would write that down. Who are the people who have the best attitudes? Who are the people that communicate at the highest levels? All right. I'm looking for those who are the overachievers who are stoked about earning the most money this summer. I'm looking for people who are excited about advancement. I'm looking for people excited about internships. What are the ones I said? Because I just like, I didn't write them down. So I'm like, I was talking about, I'm looking for people who are excited about advancement. I'm looking for people who are excited about earning, huh? Income. Income, did I say it already? Highest. Highest, um, so earn income. Um, best attitudes. attitudes, great work ethic. Did I say that one? Um, and, a, and a great work ethic, all right? People who, and then I say people who can work very well independently, but also enjoy working with a team towards bigger goals. So people that can work independently, can work well independently, but are also excited about working together towards a team goal. People that can work well independently, but are also excited about working together towards a team goal. All right. And I talk about that and I'm like, and so by the way, if that's you, let me know. And this is the extra thing I say, I'm like, and you can let me know by just verbally letting me know, which puts you on my radar, but let me know by action. You know, like I'm watching to see who wakes up in the morning, who shows up to the high flyer, you know, who's communicating at a high level, who's deeper, who's really wanting to learn and grow. Like I love people who are hungry to learn and grow and get the most out of this opportunity. All right. So again, in training, hey, if that sounds like, you know, the align being part of the starting lineup is something you might want to, you know, you might want to be a part of in the future, make sure to let me know. And you can let me know verbally, uh, puts you on my radar. I'll be watching you more, uh, but you have to show me with action, right? I'm looking for people who show up, who do what they say they're going to do, who show up at the workshops, who are putting in, who are asking questions, who are wanting to learn, who are wanting to grow. I love people who want to be at their best and want to get the most out of it. And I'm so excited to teach them. And then I always tell people, I'm like, I will tell you right now, the harder I see you work, the harder we will work for you. The harder I see you work, the harder we, and managers, we should all be saying we, because we're a team as a leadership team, we. Uh, I'm like, the harder we see you work, all right, the harder we will work for you. 
like 100% of the time. <laughs> like we will always put extra time into the people that we see really want it, all right? And that doesn't mean that you necessarily have the best results, but you have the best attitude, you have the best work ethic, and you're coachable and you're hungry to learn. Uh, know that, like that, that stands out with us. Cool. Um, and for those of you who are just here for some like part-time cash or whatever, cool. We're going to show you how to make some money. Sounds good. You know, so you always have to do that because if you're like, we want this, we want this, then your part-timers go, oh shit, maybe this is not for me. Like, I don't really want to work that hard. I don't want to like do these competitions. I don't want to be up at 8 a.m. <laughs> like they're like, so by the way, when I was newer and I learned how to like develop great alliances and pushes, I did a great job with that. Like, I remember in 2007, my office was number one in the country. We were Silver Cup champions that year, okay? Um, and that was the first year I learned how to like drive push reports. And I learned from Danny Fellman and 10K and all this stuff. And I was like, oh, hell yeah. And I was crushing it, but I was losing all of my middle, lower people, which you might say like, oh, who cares? Well, financially, you don't want to lose them. You're running training anyway. Uh, and that could add a couple extra grand a week to your paycheck, okay? So I didn't want to lose them. Um, and so I had to learn the, every time you're like, we're looking for this, or even when we talk about faster, right? Like, Hey, these guys go all out for the first 10 days or 7 a.m. every day. Like they do 50, 60 appointments. Like these guys who made five grand, seven grand, like I always promote. And I'm like, and guys, that's not for everyone, but the one or two or three of you that might want to go after it, let me know. So we can make a plan. Right. I learned how to do that, but I used to like promote. And then people were like, Oh, I don't think this job is for me. I don't know, like, I just, I can't commit that much time. You know, I was losing people. I was like, oh shit. Right? Cause I like, I learned how to do this. And so I was getting really great PPR for my top people, but losing the low. And then, so I learned, you know, and I really learned that the next year in 08, I had that balance and we crushed it. We did 1.2 mil for the summer, you know, 900 and new. And that's the summer I'm trying to beat this summer. But it was the, that balance where I like knew now how to like crush it and like develop super high and find those kids. Cause when you say, Hey, if that's you, make sure to let me know, you know, for the rest of you, like two not stress yourself most flexible job you can have you can work one day a week and make a full week's paycheck it's pretty sweet you know so we'll make a plan that works perfect for every single person all of a sudden the other kids were like oh okay but the jessica perez's of the world were like we need to talk about that thing later you know she's like i remember in training when you were like for those of you and she's like that's me you know and that girl did 15k in her fast art ran a silver she won two silver cups as a branch as a new dm uh top in the country uh and runs a top business that's been featured on like morning america different shows for like everything she's done where she does event planning jmb events um uh, but she's phenomenal so anyway but like those, those people will come up when you talk about that and say, they're like, Hey, Hey, I want to be a part of that. I can't tell you. Like I always, every single week in training had people come up to me and say, Oh, Miss, Miss Kathy, like that, um, that, that Alliance and things like, I'm very interested and I'll, I'll show you this week. I'll show you. And I'm like, all right, well, I'm excited to coach you. I'm excited to make a good plan. You know, like, again, I'm looking for a great attitude. I'm looking for good work ethic. Results are going to vary, you know, but I want people who are coachable and I would write that down. That makes people feel good. I'm looking for a great attitude. I'm looking for a great work ethic. All right. Cause results are going to vary. I just want people who are coachable and excited to grow. All right. But that's something you'll constantly hear me say to people. All right. So if they say, yeah, I want to be a part of that group. I'm like, awesome. I'm like, well, Hey, I'm going to be watching this weekend, but what do I, what, why do I do this? Can anyone tell me why I say I'm going to be watching this weekend? And then I follow up with what I just said. Uh, why would I do that? When I say, I'm going to be watching you this weekend. And then I say what I just say, why do I say that? Anyone? If I say I'm going to be watching you this weekend. Yes, but also the other side, there's that. But how about if they don't do well, Bryce? What do they think now? Uh, shit. Oh, shit. I can't be on that group, right? So I know that some are going to do great and some are not their first weekend. My first weekend was not good. If they base me being a top All-American and doing what I did based on my first weekend, my average order was 150 bucks. My closing was 40%, okay? I was not a rock star out the gates. I barely hit a grand by Monday, all right? So I would be like, oh, I'm probably not gonna, you know, I wouldn't be like trying to pursue that, right? So we have to like, it's like, hey, I'm gonna be watching this weekend. Those kids who are like, oh, I'm gonna show you, great. But I, no matter what, I want to follow up with that, like backup where they know, even if they don't do well, but they communicate well, they have a good work ethic and they're willing to learn that I want to work with them. Got it. So psychologically that does a lot, you know? So I'm like, Hey Bryce, so let's say you told me like, Oh, Miss Kristen, I'm going to be, you know, like, I really would love to be on that line. So I just want to let you know, I'm going to be working really hard to show you this weekend. I'm like, awesome, Bryce. I'm excited to coach you. I'm going to help you maximize this weekend. And by the way, regardless of results, because results vary. Like I'm looking for people who have a great attitude, 
who communicate at a higher level and who are hungry to learn. Cool. That's what I want to see. Uh, so if you're down to bust it out this weekend, I'm excited to help coach you, you know, and they're like, all right, cool. All right. So that, that, those are the conversations that you guys are having with people. Sounds good. Everyone good so far. All right. Anyone get a, a nugget yet? Anyone get something good yet? All right. Hopefully, hopefully. All right. So now they, that's training. Um, now, um, and, and as people are hitting promotions, crushing it, or by the way, any positive. So anyone who's obviously like crushing sales, but they have to be calling in and like doing the other things, right? Like, I'm not going to like give super mad props and say, I want you on my alliance. If they're like not calling in, not whatever, but selling, but if they're calling in, I see them waking up, like they're doing anything. So maybe they're not selling. They call in from every demo. They keep taking the right actions, right? They're booking demos. I'm going to tell that person, Hey, I just want to say, Adioye, so impressed with you, man. I know you haven't had the results you want yet, but man, I love your attitude. I love your work ethic. And that was true for him in the summer. You know? uh, and I was like, I love your work ethic. And I'm like, and you're someone I could definitely see being one of our top leaders. All right. And look at him. He's here branching now. All right. Adioye didn't have a 15K fast start. All right. Uh, he didn't blow it out of the gates, right out of the gates. All right. Um, but I loved his attitude. I loved his work. He showed up to every workshop. He showed up to my Alliance meetings before John's Alliance meetings. Okay. <laughs> like he, like, I was like, this is someone that is showing the characteristics of what it takes to be a champion in anything. If you have a great attitude, if you communicate effectively, and if you're always willing to learn, you will succeed at very high levels. Everyone get that. All right. So that's really important. So I'm going to point out anything I see, right? In their first week, in their fast start, in their second week, like, I'm going to point out. They keep calling me from all their demos. I'm like, Mia, I love how much you call in, girl. Like, this excites me. Like, I, we need to talk later. We're going to keep getting you back. I know you haven't seen the results you want, but let me tell you, I've been doing this a long time. You're definitely someone I could see being on my line, so I'd be super excited to coach. You know, and they're like, really? But they're thinking like, oh, man, I haven't sold anything. Like, I didn't think they'd want to work with me. But I, but I know like that attitude, like that, I know I can get her good. I know that. Put your people in front of me. I will teach them to be really damn good sales reps. Okay. I'm really good at that, but I need people who want to learn. I want people who want to grow. I want people that communicate. I want people with a great work ethic. Everyone got that. So anytime I see someone working hard, I'm going to, I'm going to recognize them for that and tell them, Hey, by the way, you might not be thinking about this, but you're someone I could see on our starting lineup. And I'd love to talk to you about it, but like, let's keep working on stuff. Right. Anytime I see someone that communicates, Hey dude, I know you might not be thinking about this because you haven't had the results or whatever, but like, I love the way you communicate. I love how coachable you are. And you're someone I could definitely see being on my alliance. And I'd love to work with you more. Cool. So we'll talk about that more, but just know that how you communicate, like excite, like I love people who like want to learn and, and I could definitely see you being part of our starting lineup. You know, and again, obviously sales results, but I want the sales results tied in with the actions that I want. Every time I recognize someone and say, hey, nice job, do two promotions, do you're crushing it. Like I could definitely see you be one of our starting, you know, on our starting lineup uh, for the playoffs, especially with how you call me, communicate, how you show up in the mornings. But again, I'm pointing to the activities, the actions, the attributes that I want in my lives. Does everyone get that? All right. Because uh, again, the sales are going to vary. But if we have people with good work ethic, good attitude, and are coachable and communicate, it's, it's, it's game over. So um, let me pause real quick. Questions? I'm good. All right. So now we have team meeting. All right. So in team meetings, I told you guys I have that staircase. So every single week at team meeting, and guess what? You guys can use one of your little sheets and put one in your house, all right? So even if you're doing opening or you're saying something to people and you're not at the office physically, you could still have that too. So having like, so you can talk about the season and what's coming up. And I tell people, I'm like, hey, by the way, for those of you who are excited about earning the most, so this is my plug to get people to move their effing schedules around and want to be on this, by the way. Because a kid sitting down sees the dates and goes, oh, my family's on vacation that week. Like, that's that. They're, they think, oh, well, I guess I can't be a part of that, right? So here, I'm like, all right. And by the way, guys, for these, uh, for the alliances, for the playoffs coming up um, and for the Super Bowl, like I'm looking um, for a, a group for our starting lineup. And I'm sure you guys have heard me talk about that in training and everything, but I'm looking for people who are willing to just like, um, you know, go all out. And, and I know some of you might have some things already planned or you're in the midst of planning something. And here's what I'll say. If your family hasn't lacked in their family vacation, please ask them to leave right after the playoffs, you know, please, or leave before or whatever. And the reason I'm saying, I mean, think about it. If, if we we're going to the Super Bowl, all right. And like Tom Brady was like, oh no, I'm going on family vacation that week and I won't be there. Right. And they're just like, oh, yeah. I'm like, 
no way, no like top athlete or whatever would miss like the playoffs or the Super Bowl. Like they plan their family life around it. And I'm not saying you need to do that, but for those who are able to and things aren't solidified, if you're able to like do it after or before, you know, and, and I could sit and plan with you. Um, uh, and you know, you want to be a part of this, like, we'd love to have you and we need our, we need our head guys here. And so I just kind of like plant that. And I'm like, and for those who have things movable, if you're able to move anything, like during these two weeks, I'm telling you, people earn more than, than their friends will all summer. <laughs> uh, people put themselves on track, you know, to be, um, uh, to do internships, to be all American scholarship winners, uh, and to really open doors to like opportunities right like they have options they create options for themselves you know so and i just plug it there but they hear it as a group now if you say that as a group do you think that does the trick and everyone moves everything around no, no absolutely not absolutely not all right maybe no one does anything all right but they've heard it there and now i can target individually and go hey mike you know during the phone jam or in a pc and i'm like hey mike by the way what do you know about this the playoffs coming up in the starting lineup and he's like uh, I know we're competing. I don't know. I, I heard we're waking up in the morning. <laughs> and I'm like, well, basically what I do is I assemble or we, you guys can all say we, we, Mrs. Kristen and the leadership in GCK, we assemble a group who's basically the starting lineup for our division that helps represent and lead the charge for GCK to compete on a national level and be one of the top divisions in the country. Cool. Um, uh, and so where, you know, for those weeks, um, you know, I'm looking for people that can just like lock arms with us and just go all out for two weeks for playoffs. And I was wondering, um, one, if that was something that you'd be open to, because I'd love to coach you. And two, what your schedule looked like around that time. Typically, almost everyone has said, yeah, I'd be interested. Or hell yeah, I definitely want to be part of that. All right, like it ranges from somewhere in there. And I'm like, all right, and what's your, and then, but they'll say, I've had people go, yeah, I, I, I would really like to, but like, I know my family's going on vacation in June or I don't know where it is. Or Jack Underwood was like, I know we're gone these days. And I'm like, oh man, okay. I'm like, well, hey, is there any, I said, look, let's sit and chat. I'm like, I would love to, I'm like, if there's any way to get you a flight home early, you know, or to move some there, maybe you go with the family for like part of it. Like that's what Caitlin's doing for us too, right? She's going for part of it and she's flying back. I'm like you gotta be at this, right? Um, uh, she'll be back for it. She'll be back for it. Okay, yeah. Fly like at midnight to go to Destin and then when they're all driving 14 hours, I don't fly back. No, about that. <laughs> but you, yeah, you just, you were, and by the way, guys, I can't, I will tell you that I would say a good chunk of people I've had conversations with over the last two decades have rearranged stuff. There's some that couldn't, like I had someone two years ago and she's like, we have a flight to the Philippines, you know, or something. It was like somewhere halfway across the world, like they're booked the flights. And she tried, she goes, let me see with my parents. Let me see what we can do. And she checked and she's like, it's going to be $680 to change the flight. And I was like, it's all right. I'm like, no worries. Let's just, let's rock the days you're here. We're going to celebrate for you in spirit. I'm going to be on stage with a picture of you, you know, when you're winning a trophy and they're like, okay. And they were still tied in and they were still rocking for the push, you know, and she worked uh, five days. She sold $14,000 and I was up there or actually this was back in Miami, not two years ago, but I had this happen again two years ago where she tried and she couldn't do it. Um, but one of my girls back home, Erica, you know, Palmer did that, you know, and I was like, hell yeah. So you just, you have to throw it out there. All right. What's the worst that happens? They can't move it. Right. But what's the best that happens? You know, like they can, or sometimes like Matthew Litter, like was going to be out for one of them for most of it, right. For the playoffs or Super Bowl, And we knew he was going to be a rock star for us. And I'm like, Hey, what are your dates? So like after their fast start, just so you guys know. So this is another thing right after their fast start, I sit and map the summer. Cool. And I find out what's happening during playoffs and during Super Bowl. Like I mark those dates in their calendar. I'm like, Hey, let's make a normal week to week schedule. So this is post fast start. All right. So we're transitioning from team meeting to backwards. I don't know. So post fast start when I sit down and do their PC, right? Cause fast start it, the, the goal is go all out, whatever that means for them. After fast start, we sit down and make a normal schedule. So I say, this is my training. I say, Hey, by the way, guys, in fast start, go all out, go all in all out for some of you is one demo a day. All out for some of you is going to be seven to 10 demos a day. All right. Everyone's different. Whatever that means for you. After your first week, this is my in training. After your first week, we're going to sit down and make a normal week to week schedule. Cool. Our part timers typically work one to three days. Our full timers work three to six days. Uh, the number of demos per day varies on their personal goals. Cool. So we'll make a normal schedule. So guys, so now back to the PC. So now after they finish their fast start, review their numbers and we make a normal schedule. 
the biggest thing you can do, and, and Cody, I don't know that we've talked about this a lot, but Justin Donald told me this in 08 when we had our million dollar summer. And he said, the number one biggest thing you need to do, well, he told me two things for me as a district manager. He said, number one, you have to create structure for everyone. Cool. Like this job is flexible. It's the worst thing for everyone. They love it, but it's the worst thing for the average college kid because they suck at time management. <laughs> He's like, so you have to give them structure. All right. So sit down with them, see how much they want to make per week at a minimum and make a plan around that and try to do it in, in the least amount of demos po days possible. Um, you know, not exceeding five demos per day, you know, uh, on, on, on all of them, like pick one or two days to do like a seven demo day if they need it. And then the other days to do like three to five appointments. Right. And I was like, okay, but he said, give structure. That was huge because every kid after their fast start, we sat down, Hey, how much do you want to be earning? What do you want to do? And most people, it's just like 10 demos a week that they need. Cause if they do 10 demos, even with six sales, six sales times 350 is $2,100. You know, if you're at 20%, it's a $400 paycheck. If you're at 25, that's a $500 paycheck. If you're at 30%, that's a $640 paycheck. That's huge. You know, so most kids, they're good there, you know? And so when we made that plan, it's like, okay, cool. So 10 demos, I would recommend doing that in probably a three-day period. Uh, maybe you have two days that you do like, I don't know, three, four demos. Uh, and then one day that you blitz and do six plus, you know, I'm like, you want to have at least 12 or 13 in your schedule to make sure you complete your 10. So that's what I would do is I would do like two days of like three or four, and then one day of like five or six. And I'm like, does that sound good to you? And they're like, oh yeah. I'm like, so like, if we did three this day, you could do three in the morning and take the rest of the day and chill, you know, or you could like hang out during the day with grandma and mom and run errands and then start at four and do three or four demos after four o'clock. And so we make a plan. We make it like Burger King or wherever gives you a schedule. I told my reps always, and Justin taught me this, he said, like the job's super flexible. All right. You get to make your own schedule, but you need to make one and we're going to sit and do it with you. And so every week you'll submit your schedule and that's our job to hold you accountable to that. Cool. If an emergency come up, something happens, we get it. All right. Uh, but the flexibility is not in a day to day. I want to work today or not. The flexibility is in that you get to have say in your weekly schedule and structure it together with us. Cool. Um, uh, so they're like, oh, okay, that's normal. Any other job they hand them and they say, this is when you need to be here. Right. So that's so cool that I get to have a say in like structuring, like when I want to work. And I'm like, so after your fast start, we always, you know, again, we always make that schedule. And I always tell them, I'm like, and guys, here's the beauty. If next week your best friend's coming into town, you guys want to go on the boat all weekend, you can do that. And we can change your days. And you're like, I'm going to do my 10 demos in two days on Tuesday, Wednesday. And then I'm going to be on the boat Thursday through Sunday. Hell yeah. Enjoy. You know? And they're like, oh, cool. All right. So just knowing like, what's the demo number they need. So we talk about that. And then I say, so here's, a here's what it looks like if you did this consistently. I said, and by the way, these dates, and then we look at the dates. So I'm like, so here's a normal schedule. I'm like, and so most people, like, this is what, the, you know, we want to create a schedule that you're going to do every week for the rest of the summer, basically. It'll adjust. It'll change. You might have vacation. I was like, except for the pushes. I'm like, the pushes, I was like, I always ask everyone, can you do a couple more than you normally do? I ask everyone that. And then I'm looking for those people who are going to help us lead the charge and lock arms and go all out. You know, and if it's someone I want, I'm like, is that something you might be open to? I'm going to ask everyone if that's something they would be open to. Okay. What's the worst they, they, they say? No, like I want as many people there in the mornings. It's so easy to manage the team when they're all there. Um, but then the ones that I know I want, I'm like, so we're going to make the schedule. Here's what you're in. I'm like, and if you can, I said, are you, I know I've been talking a lot about like the Super Bowl, the playoffs coming up and stuff like are you open to being on the Alliance? Cause I would love to coach you, Alvaro. I would love to have you on that group. I'm like, is that something you're open to? I'm like, I know it's a lot to ask. We're waking up at 8 a.m. We're working at 8 a.m. Monday through Saturday for two weeks while all your friends are probably sleeping at one o'clock. So like, I know it's a very big ask, but I would love to coach you. And I was wondering if that's something that you might be interested in. So like, if it's that person, like I'm going to tell them that, you know, for anybody else, we make their schedule and I go, Hey, and then for the, for the playoffs coming up, we're looking for people who are, is that something you, you might be open to, you know? Um, and then what's in it for them. It's like, Hey, it's going to help you earn more. It's going to help you get better at the job. It's going to help you get more promotions. It's going to put you on Mrs. Kristen's radar. Uh, so if you are interested in internships later, like your resume is just going to look awesome, <laughs> you know? And when you graduate, you just have more options and that's the goal for everybody. Okay. So those are the biggest things, um, uh, you know, and then you target people. Like if I'm like, Hey, um, uh, you know, I want to, I want to chat with you, Jade. 
Um, uh, I want to see if we can get a quick call and just schedule time. I want to talk to you about the starting lineup because you're someone I really would love to see as a part of that. Um, do you have time to speak at one day? You know, and then we'll we'll talk to them. So we're going to be talking more at one of our management calls. So starting next week or in three days, so uh, Tuesday mornings, we're going to start having our division call at 9 a.m. It's from 9 to 10 a.m. every every uh, Tuesday for all managers, uh, like district managers and branch managers. Assistant managers, there's going to be call every day starting Tuesday from 2 to 3 p.m. Okay, so just so you guys know, like those will be happening starting this Tuesday. Um, uh, but in one of our calls, we'll let everybody know we're going to we're going to probably like in two weeks, two or three weeks, we're going to actually talk about like the PC, like when you're sitting down to like really lock them in, get full commitment, sign a contract. But sometimes you'll do it sooner. Like like I'm after fast start, I talk to you, right? I'm like, oh, we have this. I'm like, by the way, you're someone, they're like, oh, I know I want to be on it. I'm like, all right, well, then clear those days for sure and clear up June 8th. So everyone you guys need to be talking to now about clear June 8th, clear June 8th, if, if it interests you at all. And again, it's not about being on the Alliance. It's the Alliance is a group. It's a starting lineup. These are the biggest earners for the summer. Always. These are our scholarship winners. Always. This is where internships. So if you really want to maximize your summer, whether it's financially or experience wise, like this is a group you want to be a part of. Um, like, and they're like, I'm like, is that something that would interest you at all? And they're like, oh yeah. Or if I know they want to make 20 grand for the summer, or I know they want to get this. I just say, Hey, Albert, I know you want to make 20 K this summer. Dude, one, like, I will tell you right now, the guys who are in that, they're always part of this group. Like, because you get extra coaching, you get extra attention, you get so much better at the job, you know? Uh, and, and you're working with a group of people that are like motivating you, inspiring you versus doing it on your own. It's a lot easier when you're doing it with other people, you know, even the best athletes, like the best athletes that are disciplined as hell and they work out and they do an amazing job by themselves when they're in a competitive situation, when there's someone else there, it brings out the best in you. And that's what a lot of asks is I love playing against this person or I love practicing with this person because they push me. They challenge me to go beyond what I normally do, right? And so that's kind of what being on the Alliance tells you. People that are like, like inspiring you, challenging you, or you're just like, oh shit, like you want to keep up with them, you know? Like, and so it makes you like work harder. So it's just, it's cool. Cause again, you can do it on your own, but this group, like there's so much like uh, energy and synergy that's happening and like motivation and, and friendly competition uh, where you just end up performing at a higher level and doing better. So I just, I thought about you because I know you wanted to make 20K this summer. And if you do, this is a group you definitely want to be a part of. You know, is that something you'd want to talk more about? He's like, oh yeah, all right. So if you know they have a big goal, you know, let's say who here, like, you know, they want to have an internship, right? You Or you know, they want to run their own business. If anyone wants to run their own practice, chiropractor, accountant, teacher, tutoring company, artist, have their own art studio, whatever. They want to have their own of something. You guys need to be telling them this is why you should be on the Alliance, right? So it's like, hey, if you want to run your own business, like, do you know about our entrepreneurship internship? Be like, you as a young person if selected, like the company gives you money to basically run a franchise for a quarter of a billion dollar company. <laughs> like to put that on your resume, that like you got to run a business for a quarter of a billion dollar company. And you actually, Mrs. Kristen teaches you like um, how to start a business from scratch and like how to manage yourself, how to manage others, how to manage finances, how to build wealth. And like, do you think that might be good for you? I'm like, I'll tell you right now, dude, it's the best like business grad school program you'll go through is getting a chance to do that internship. And they're like, oh, really? Be like, yeah. Uh, and they say, oh my God, yeah, I want to do that. And I'm like, well, it all goes back to being on the Alliance. It's like, well, by the way, if that's something that you want to really set yourself apart to like have a chance at that, you definitely want to be on the Alliance because Mrs. Kristen is there every day and she's watching and seeing who's actually waking up, who's showing up. You know, she does, she, you know, she obviously performing at high levels looks really good and it'll give you opportunities for maybe like where, where you want to go. But really she's looking to see like, work ethic. She's looking to see attitude. She's looking to see commitment, you know? And so being part of this group is a big deal. And this is who she opens up applications for first are those who are in alliance because she knows they're serious, they're committed, you know, uh, and they want to get the most out of this job. And they're like, all right, cool. All right. So those are, that's everything. I just spit a lot of crap though, but don't worry. I recorded it. So you guys can listen to it on slow motion, um, but go ahead. Q and A. Yeah. Uh, so the internship, is that the rough for branch? Or is that is so all, all different internships, right? So entrepreneurship internship branch is a three to four month summer internship, right? Kaylin's doing an entrepreneurship internship, but she's a district manager. She's committing to a year. So a district manager is committing for one to three years. A branch manager is committing for three to four months. Cool. Yep. Other, other questions? 
Yes. How do, how, how do you have a conversation with a rep who has a very busy schedule and their parents, you get the parent with the direction of like, oh, like, you know, you need to be on vacation and you work hard and stuff. Like, I know you're really good. I just got like a week teaching. Like, if the kid school. is really excited, they're going to make it happen. Okay. Like the fact is they're using parents as a crutch a lot of times. And yes, parents want them to travel, but I'm like, if they're really excited, they're like, mom, I got to do this. Like I can run my own business. I can do this. Like if they're super excited, they typically like figure it out, you know, and we'll balance. I'm like, I don't want you to miss your family vacay, you know, but it's like, are they able to move? Are, is it okay if you leave a day early? Uh, yeah, or my thing was like, since it's all virtual, like they can work on vacation. So I can do I don't want them working a ten on vacation. Uh, I might tell them like my guys who went away on vacation. Like I, I tell them like I want you to be with your family when you're there. I want you with your family. But they're like, oh no, but we're just going to be doing. This. I'm like, okay, cool. Well then, I would say maybe you do two in the morning. Wake up early, be with us on Alliance at eight, rock two demos, and then go to lunch with your family and hang out the rest of the day. But talk to your family, see what they're doing, because maybe one day they're leaving in the morning to go to the like the national forest, and they're going to hate us because you're working. You don't have to work then. You know, so just plan with them and tell them, hey, mom, I want to try to do one or two appointments a day if I can, because we have this big competition. My boss doesn't expect me to work at all, but I really want to let me know when I'm able to. And then the parents also respect that, you know, that they don't tell their parents, my boss needs me to work. They'll say, my boss told me I don't have to work, but I really want to, you know, when can I do one or two a day? Um, so, yeah, I don't know if that helps with your answer, but I really, I really encourage them to like live their life and enjoy the time that they have. You know, like I don't want them working all the time, but then also like when it's like when it's put like it's playoffs again, I tell them, I'm like, hey, tell your parents and I'll talk to them. I'm like, it's just like sports, like no key athlete is going to miss like the playoffs, you know, in their season, because that's what they work for all year. I know you just started so like and your parents don't even they're like, what is this weird knife job? Like it doesn't even mean a ton to you yet. Um, but I think that you could be a rock star here and, you know, I'd love to have you as part of this crew. So it's really up to you. Would you, I was looking at it. Um... Alliance SE1 uh, contracts. What are thoughts on maybe like a parent signature? Not like a signature, like, you know what I'm trying to say? If you need it, I mean, if the parents, I think, like, uh, get a call. Like, for me, I always met the parents. Anyone that had an issue like that, have a have a, a virtual coffee date. You know, put that, put that, put that on, the, like, send them a calendar invite that says coffee with, you know, virtual coffee with John and do a virtual coffee with them. And, and it's not about why their kids needs to be on push. It's getting to know them. So I wanted to get to know you because, you know, I want to take time to, to meet with you because I have absolutely loved working with Adioya and just wanted to get, um, kind of give you some feedback on what I've seen. And, and all you're doing is building the shit out of their kid. You're, you're praising them. Like you've done an amazing job. Like he does this, this, this. Like we love having him on our team, you know? And they're like, oh my gosh, thank you. You know, um, but it just, it's, it, that brings pride to the parents, right? And it's like, and I wanted to chat with you because I know he mentioned, he came up, he, he told me, and again, they need to want to be on it. That's why I said, if they're excited about being on it, it's easier. They'll, they'll figure it out themselves. Or if I need to, which I've had some parent combos. I'm like, I wanted to meet with you because uh, this happened with my girls, Priscilla. I said, Priscilla came to me and she said, she really wanted to be a part of the Alliance, but that you guys had a lot of stuff going on. I told her, don't worry about it. But she's like, no, like I want to be a part of it. You know? And so I, I wanted to share a little bit more about what it is and what we're going to be doing. Um, uh, uh, and just to see if it's a good fit or not, you know, uh, any hesitations you have, whether it's hesitations with time or it's hesitations with, you know, um, uh, and just to see if she could be a good fit or not, you know, I want to honor what you say. Um, uh, and I know that, you know, she said that you guys had some stuff going on. So I just, I want to get a little more insight because I know she's been after me about like getting accepted to be a part of the group. And I, I just, I wanted to get some time with you. Parents appreciate that. And I'm like, you know, so has she spoken to you at all about it? You know, I'm like, so basically, you know, our company, we work with a bunch of students and we explain and I can do that conversation another day, but I tell them about us, what we do. And I said, and we work like a sports team. So this is our season. So, you know, for these two weeks, I said, the goal, and here's the big thing that all parents need to hear when I say this in parents' night, I said, the goal, the reason we do this, so I always tell parents, I'm like, we could meet at lunchtime every day. We could. But the whole goal of these two weeks is to prepare them for the real world. It's about learning how to wake up, being on time, being responsible. You know, it's about learning discipline. It's about getting up and doing things when they don't feel like it, you know, especially when their friends are sleeping till one o'clock. And so it's just teaching them responsibility and habits. And, and that's what this program's all about. This program is about teaching them skills for life, things that are going to transfer into the real world that they'll always use. 
And I think Priscilla could be, I think this would be incredible for her. I know she wants to have her own practice. I know she wants to do a lot of things. I know she's a you know, super achiever in school and we're not going to take away from any of that. Our goal is to add to that. Our goal is to, um, uh, you know, uh, give her tools and empower her to be able to take it to the next level with what she's doing. You know, and I think a lot of parents appreciate that too, because I'm just telling you guys all, a lot of parents think they're trying to take my kid to just be a knife salesman forever. That's what a lot of parents think. And I'm like, that's, that's not what this is at all. Like this is a skills for life development program to help your students be the most marketable, the most sought after when they graduate from college, you know? And so this, this two week period, we do this to start teaching them, you know, certain things. And if they get accepted into our leadership Academy in our leadership Academy, we teach them personal finances, investing, how to manage themselves, emotional intelligence, how to manage others, how to motivate, inspire, how to like have difficult conversations and conflict resolution. All right, by the way, people pay tens of thousands of dollars to have people come in. They're flying me in a couple months to go do this for one company in Colorado. I'm getting flown to Arizona to just for a company to talk about conflict resolution and difficult conversations made easy. And then I was just asked to speak at a CEO group um, in a couple of weeks to talk about that, that. And you guys, many of you who were in GCLA learned that. I talked about when like, you know, stepping back, looking at the real thing. Like I walked you guys through steps. I'm like, difficult, I call it difficult conversations made easy, but it's, it's conflict resolution, you know, and how to have those difficult combos. Like people get paid a shit ton of money. Uh, and I'm doing it for very little for friends of mine that I was like, I'll go like, is it okay if I fly you, take care of you, do this and pay you 5,000. And I was like, it's fine, dude, fly me and treat me to it. Like, I'm going to put you up in the nicest place. And I'm like, great. Uh, from our CEO group, but like people need this. Like these aren't skills people get to learn. So when you're talking about, again, what do parents care that their kid is prepared to be the most successful in their life. That's why they want them focused on school. That's why they want them doing their internship. That's why they do it. Cause they just want them to have the best opportunities. You guys get that? So if the conversations that you're having with parents are centered around helping their kid be at their best, opening the most doors, being the most marketable and sought after, parents are like, hell yeah, let's do that. Let's get my kid there. So what else? Thank you. You're welcome. You were talking about like the full summer and during summer, like the planning to see the home, you know, the rush for the rush period and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. rush period stuff. So planning seeds throughout, yeah. Um, after summer, you know, like during when there's no push periods, what kind of seeds? We always find competitions. We have like fall classic. We've got March Madness. We've got stuff. Uh, we'll talk more about that later. So we'll focus on summer for now. That's a great question. But uh, we, we always find something. Um, so there's always different contests on the off season, like off season competitions. But then when it's season, it's like go time. And that's just because people have more availability generally in the summer, right? Students have more availability. And that's why that's our season. So specifically for seed planting and PR calls and things like that, um, I understand in interviews you want to go a little bit more in depth but in the PR calls, since we're just dropping seeds, what would be one of your recommendations to go into a script for a So you could go back and hear me say it again, but I'll say something real quick, like off the cuff. But if I'm talking to you and I'm like, oh, hey, Mike, what's up? I'm like, this is Kathy. I don't know if we've had a chance to meet. You know, uh, Cody's been working with us and just absolutely crushing it. Uh, we're actually getting ready right now for like our version of the playoffs. Uh, we kind of work like sports teams and we're looking to add some people to the team. And I asked Cody if he knew anyone that might do well and he had recommended you. And they're like, oh, like that's an easy place to just say it right there. Yeah. You could put it in different places, but like just that right there, super easy. And they're like, like, that's why I'm calling them. I'm calling them because, you know, we're getting ready for our playoffs. We're looking to like, you know, uh, whatever, like uh, have a bigger team, what a team up, staff up. I don't know, whatever <laughs> you can use different verbiage, but you know, we're just, we're looking, we're looking for extra help. I've said that I'm like, Hey, I'm giving you a call because we're getting ready for our playoffs and um, we're looking for extra help, you know, for our big competition. And I asked Cody if he knew anyone that might be down to work for a couple of weeks, make some cash and help us out. And he had referred you. Right. So like, I can't, cause I just like say it, but like, those are different versions of kind of the same thing, but just throwing that in. Does that help? Cool. All right. Questions from zoomers. Zoom universe. All right. Dustin. As far as your staff, as I understand, how can you realign them with yours? How do you do everything? Everything I just talked about. You need to start talking about all of this right now, like what it is, what we're about, what I said for the parents. Like you should be talking to your staff about that, of just like, hey, why do we do this, right? The why. They understand why do we push? Why do we do it? You know, and it's really for us to see what people are made of. You know, and we say our side, like it's a chance for us to 
when we're looking at, um, cause this group is where typically our biggest earners are professionals, like those who advance into cutco sales professional roles, those who advance into management roles, you know, like they usually come from this group and really it's, it's a chance for us to evaluate and to see, you know, kind of who can hack it uh, in many cases, but also for those of you who are a part of that, it's an opportunity to really get some great um, habits in place of like real life skills, you know, and really seeing what you're made of. It's so cool watching people who like are not morning people or like um, uh, don't have confidence or have a really bad at time management or organization, or maybe they're like their parents think they never get anything done because they're so lazy and seeing them prove to themselves that they could do that, you know? And so people do it for different reasons. Um, but, you know, for us, um, we're, you know, like we, our company, like, why does our company do it? Like, if you're talking about that, it's like our company's like sports team. So like football's in the fall, we're in the summer and this is go time, you know, but um, what specific part? So do you advise, uh, so as far as your staff goes, how much of your staff is on this? How much? All field assistants, every single one. During June, part-timers are in the field too. They know that in June during SE1 push, like we're like, th those are the last two weeks of our heaviest like recruiting. And like the, the, the trickle from the high school mailers and the second batch of the college mailers come in in mid June. So like, there's that trickle through there. So my staff always knew like you we're, we're all during the push, everyone works. So here's, let me, let me rewind during the push. We all work every day. We all push for two weeks, all staff for two weeks. We go all out. You're at the office or you're on a demo for two weeks. We're all pushing. So if they're not selling as much and they're in the office helping us field demos, they're helping us book more people, they're helping us handle whatever the hell has to happen in the office side of things. Because I might have like, for instance, my last summer in Miami, right? My sales manager typically doesn't go out. They're closing sales the whole time. Everyone else goes out besides my dom or my sales manager, right? But in 2014, Paz was my sales manager. And this kid has been rocking sales for me since 2008. He's like, I want to go sell, you know? And, and Beck, who is one of our part-time assistants, like, wasn't, you know, a big salesperson. She just really loved like working with people and wanted the business experience for her business. And she was like, I'll stay in. And I was like, great. So she was in the whole time closing sales and working side by side with me while Paz was out there field training people selling 24 grand, you know? So I just kind of, you know, typically my Dama Cass is not going out to sell for SE1, no way in hell. For SE2, if she wants to, she can. And I have to make sure I have proper support. But like Mary Lou never went out to sell for SE2. It was her and I just like, do, 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 like closing sales, running interviews, doing whatever. Um, but yeah, during SE2, everyone's expected to go all out uh, except for my dom. And if they want to, then I need to find someone else to help because we're going to have a hundred demos a day. Um, and I, I need support for that. Um, and so all the staff, let me say this for, for, if they're, for SE2 is when I'm like, you're all selling, like everyone's out. I don't have them in office days, except um, depending on percentage, every assistant manager's in one day a week. Some are in two days a week. They're all there every morning until 10 a.m. every day because we do alliance, they make calls and they help me PDI the whole team. Like the, the team's been PDI'd by 10.30. They can start their demos by 11 a.m. and have the rest of the day to sell on the days they're not in the office. So they have either one or two office days depending what percentage they're at. Um, it's one or two office days. And then every day they're in the office and their first demos at 11 a.m. That way we get the team handled, they're good. And then they just go sell, field train people and manage their teams because we do many teams. So they like between demos, check up on their guys. They have the, you know, their little group chats going and it's awesome. Cool. We can talk more about that. Anybody else? Zoomers, did you guys zone out? Any questions, anything's there? <laughs> All right, so go ahead, Matthew. Uh, I just want to say first, uh... Love to talk. If I know you've worked pretty close with me, I love verbiage. Like if you give me a bunch of one-liners, I that's <laughs> what I love. Uh, but question, uh, I honestly wouldn't even care how to ask it, so I didn't just ask it. Uh, but going in um, with so like opening a branch uh, and you're looking for people. I know you said you'll talk about PR and like every chance you get, basically. Um, would there be or like what's the point if someone says? Uh, like you're talking about and stuff and they actually bring up to you uh, like in a PR call for, for instance, like if you're setting them up for an interview and they say like, uh, you know, I'm like, I'm definitely one of those kind of people or they're excited about it, even just from that. Uh, what's a good way to get them from excited about it to get them to do even more than the above average rep. If that you makes just, sense. It, it's always a push away of like, they need to prove it. They can be excited, but if they don't do anything, like we're not going to have them in that role. 
So, you know, if they're really excited. I'm like, hey, Maddie, make sure that's where it makes it so much easier for you to create a bigger names list for them to open their weekend, for them to go out for their fast start, right? Because if they're like, that's what I want. Like my friend told me, like I've had someone come in before, right? And they're like, oh, my buddy's running an office. He told me like, if I do the right things, I can run my own business. Like that's something I really want to do. I'm like, awesome. I'm like, well, hey, that's not just handed out. Obviously it's a super competitive position. Uh, so we're looking for people who not only, you know, like say the right things, but do the right things. We look for action. So great attitude, uh, great communicator, great work ethic. I mean, those are things we look for. So we'll, we'll only be able to tell that through time, but I'm excited to have you on the team. I'm excited to help coach you. I'm excited to help guide you uh, and hopefully help you hit that goal. Great, good, answered. <laughs> Loud. Clarity. Okay, first, thank you for the talk. Just want to say, kind of crazy because all this stuff you said, I kind of realized what you're being done to me that I think about the next person. John started in my office. He heard it all. It was done to him too. All right, go ahead. I'm looking at all of this. All right, go, go. We're still recording. What's the question? So, my question is I remember early talking about the effort of going for souls. Mm -hmm. right? So, is there like a certain benchmark for that? Right? So, like, yeah, no, they're going to have to have results, but I'm not focused on results. Okay. I know if they take the right actions, if they're showing up, if they're communicating with me, they're going to get good. Okay. Like, I know that. So if we focus on them taking the right actions and they keep doing that, like I know they're going to get the right results. If they're not getting the right results, that means you're not paying attention and you're not diving in to help fix them. Okay, thank you. And if you need help fixing someone, tell me and I can tell you how to fix them. I'm really good at that. Any, any, other, any other comments or questions? All right, well, that was much longer.